So speaking of buying stock in your company, how did you decide to transfer it or how did you decide to make it a publicly traded company and what are the benefits of, of doing that? Yeah. So, um, so we went public, uh, about nine months ago now, uh, via a SPAC, uh, with Mercer Park. Uh, we did it on the Neo exchange up in Canada. Um, you know, of course, again, the, the, the silliness of cannabis is Canadian cannabis companies can be public in the U S but U S cannabis companies have to be, can only be public in Canada, Canada. Um, and Merce, and the Neo exchange is the one that allows SPACs. Um, the way a SPAC works uh, for people who don't know is it's, it's, I kind of call it a, you know, a, a pre-funded IPO. It's a way to go public, but the money's actually there before you go public versus afterwards. Uh, and the reason we did it, um, was because there's a unicorn of a greenhouse that we wanted to acquire. It's our new greenhouse down in Camarillo, Ventura County, uh, second largest greenhouse in the United States. Eventually, you know, be, I think it becomes the largest cannabis greenhouse in the world. We're doing it in stages, so we're not bringing all of that online now. We're actually just you know, bringing on 600,000 square feet of canopy or so. But that was a $120 million greenhouse plus another hundred million in equity. We got the purchase price and negotiated down to $93 million um, plus hundred million in equity, but they're really the only way, and then it needs you know, some retrofit work. The only way that you can raise that kind of money is by going public, right? There's not the raising 150 million bucks uh, other ways is, is pretty tough to do. The SPAC in particular is good for raising larger amounts. So we went public to buy the greenhouse and the reason to go, you know, the, the only way to buy the greenhouse was going public, if that if that makes sense. If it hadn't been for that greenhouse, I'm not sure we would have because we just wouldn't have had a, you know, you know, financial, a, a good fiduciary use for that money other than this big, you know, project. So for us, it made sense uh, to do. Uh, being public is interesting. There's, you know, there's upsides and downsides. Um, there's a lot of regulatory compliance. There's a lot of overhead, quarterly reports, disclosures, you know, full audits. Uh, we're, we're all gap, uh, you know, lots of cost of legal and attorneys. The upsides, though, is you also now, in, in addition to having a, you know, cash currency, you've got an equity currency. So, for example, plus we bought for about $25 million. It's all equity. Right. And so we can acquire a company that, again, you know, $25 million, especially these days in cannabis is a, is a big number. If you're paying in cash, we can, we can print shares. And so as long as it's not dilutive and we feel it's accretive to our shareholders of which, you know, I'm a big one and haven't taken any money off the table. And so, you know, every morning I put my feet on the ground as a shareholder first, as long as it makes sense to do that deal, we can make it happen without writing a check. And, and that's something you can only do as a, as a pub co. By accessing this podcast, you acknowledge that the Penny Lane podcast makes no warranty, guarantee, or representation as to the accuracy or sufficiency of the information featured in this podcast. The information, opinions, and recommendations presented in this podcast are for general information only, and any reliance on the information provided in this podcast is done at your own risk. This podcast should not be considered professional or financial advice. Unless specifically stated otherwise, the Penny Lane podcast does not endorse, approve, recommend, or certify any information, product, process, service, or organization presented or mentioned in this podcast. And information from this podcast should not be referenced in any way to imply such approval or endorsement. The third-party materials or content of any third-party site referenced in this podcast do not necessarily reflect the opinions, standards, or policies of the Penny Lane podcast. The Penny Lane podcast assumes no responsibility or liability for the accuracy or completeness of the content contained in third-party materials or on third-party sites referenced in this podcast or the compliance with applicable laws of such materials and or links referenced herein.